The crystal lake is close. Is close. The crystal is close. The crystal is close. The crystal. What's up, everyone? This is Andrew, and you are watching Entertainment Universe once again. Hopefully, you're watching it. I'm trying to get back into the rhythm of posting more videos more frequently. So, uh, bear with us while we're while we're doing that. As we all know, there are some movies that can just get overly complicated. Transformers The Last Night, I think one of the biggest complaints that a lot of people had, I know I had about the movie, was that it was so complex. I got out of the theater and I came home and tried to explain the plot to my parents and I <laughs> honestly didn't even, even know how, really. Like, I remember sitting there and I was just like, I, I, like, I, I, I don't even really know <laughs> what happened. I remember certain events, but, but that's like it. I remember that Hot Rod had a French accent because he wanted to. Hot Rod! And that Optimus was evil for like 10 minutes. Sometimes the best movies are the simplest movies. And today I want to talk about a movie that is incredibly simple. It's like as simplistic as it can get, and it's called Everything Beautiful is Far Away. Now this movie came up on my radar because I was watching The Vast of Night, which, shameless plug, if you haven't watched our Vast of Night video, which should be up on the channel by now, go watch that. Spoiler alert, it's, uh, it's, it's me talking about it again. So it came up on my radar, and, you know, I don't know, I didn't know what it was. The poster looked interesting, and I was like, okay, I'll look at this, because the title was cool, the poster was interesting. And then I read the plot summary and I was like, okay, that's pretty dope. So I looked it up and I watched the trailer and I was like, all right, I gotta watch this. And so I did. This movie is written and directed by Pete O's and co-directed by Andrea Sisson or Sisson. I don't know how you say her name exactly. It stars Julia Garner, Joseph Cross, and Jillian Mayer. It's basically about two people and a robot head who are venturing across this white desert in search of this big body of fresh water called the Crystal Lake. This is a spoiler warning, by the way, I'm going to uh, put this in the, in the beginning of the video. But uh, spoilers for the entire movie, just to let you know. Spoilers. Like I do every time. What was my, like, just broad consensus of the movie? I really like this movie. Yeah! Like, really like it. Um, it had its flaws, and I'll get into those in a second, but I, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. It's kind of sci-fi. Like, you almost get the idea that they might not even be on Earth. It could be a different planet. There's like foods and stuff, like the roots that they pull out of the ground are not real. They're like dactyl roots. This is Cornyptus root. It's good, lots of protein, safe to eat. This is dactyl root. It's bad. So it's obviously some sort of fictional setting and all the plot summaries say on a desert planet but they never really, they never really say a whole lot about that. I wish they had have explored the world of it just a little more, like told us a little more about it, just than, you know, more than just that there's the city and then there's the dunes. I felt like we could have gotten a little more about it, but it wasn't, it wasn't distracting to me. Like the whole time I wasn't like, oh, I need to know what's going on. And then when I didn't, I was like, oh, this is like, I'm, I, I can't handle this. It was it wasn't distracting for me. I still could really enjoy the movie, even though there was a few things that were that were a little ambiguous. It was almost simplistic to the point of not quite delving deep enough into some of the characters. Some of their motivations were a little unclear. Like their ultimate motivation was to find the Crystal Lake. But like Rola sometimes seemed like she was really adventurous and inquisitive, and the other times she was kind of stubborn, and maybe those aren't conflicting, I don't know, it just occasionally felt like it was conflicting a little bit, and then Lernert sometimes seemed really like caring and really nice, 
and other times he also seemed really stubborn and kind of stuck in his ways. So occasionally the characters felt like they flip-flopped a little bit, but they were still really, really, I think, interesting characters and really likable characters. What I realized is that pretty much everything that happens in the movie involves one of three things. It's either them finding food and water, them finding parts to build Susan a body, and then the third one is to find the Crystal Lake, which is ultimately the, the whole goal of the movie. It's interesting when you break it down into those three things because you really see that that's most of what happens. And we don't even get a whole lot of scenes of just like Rolla and Lerner and stuff like arguing and like all this bad stuff happening because they, they do argue. So we get a little bit of conflict there, but ultimately they come together as a team. They find a stranger. They, they talk to him a little bit and he sa he says something about he walks because he didn't like where he was and he doesn't like where he is, so he keeps walking. But most of the movie is pretty much Rolla, Lerner, and uh, his, his robot, the head of his robot, Susan. And it's pretty much them going across the desert. And that's not to say that it's like, it's just so surface level and there's, there's nothing to the movie. But it's just to say that they they told the story they wanted to tell they just they just told it they just they they had an idea and it was a very simple idea but they communicated it and it was executed incredibly well we never really truly learn why she's in the dunes i don't know if she just kind of was there by mistake or if she wants to be there learner wants to be there he doesn't really like the city. But we don't really know a whole lot about Rolla's feeling about like the city and stuff. And because we hear because we hear that in the end narration, they go back to the city. And the whole time Susan is doing like a voiceover, that's the very first thing you hear in the movie is we see Lerner walking across the desert and Susan narrates. And I don't remember exactly what she says, but in the end uh, we see the like pan across the Crystal Lake and she does a narration about what happened afterward, how they went to the city and told some people, some people believed them, some people didn't. So I, I don't know if Rolla lives there and Lerner just followed her because he would rather be with her than in the, in the dunes. But so I'm, I'm not, that wasn't entirely clear to me. It's interesting because they find a way to make walking across the desert getting food and water and just kind of all of that stuff they make it interesting at least to me it was very interesting um for one the, the the cinematography oh it's beautiful it's like these bright skies with this like bright almost white sand it's really cool it's really and susan's design is really interesting i don't know she had like these kind of human eyes and she had like this wo these wood panels which I feel like is really unique for a robot design, like to see like wood panels. I don't know. It felt kind of different to me. It ends happy, which I actually didn't expect. It ends where they find the Crystal Lake and they're together and Lernert talks about his book that he's been writing. It is the whole reason that actually they set out on the journey because Rola reads it reads this book that he's been writing about like the samurai and he's in the book he mentions something about getting to the crystal lake she's like whoa because apparently it's this real thing or supposedly it's a real thing they're not sure that she's heard about and she's like how'd you know about it and he was like i i didn't maybe, maybe he had heard it from susan because she knows about it that's why rolla even pursues it too because because susan says something about it at one point so it's really his book and i, I feel like the book is kind of like not a metaphor for the whole story i guess it kind of is like a parallel to the whole story i don't know because in it he writes about some girl who is in love with everything or something like that and i and you you feel it you get the sense that he's writing about rolla whether he knows it or not i think in the in the end he says like i know how i know i know how i'm gonna end my book and he says something about you know it's gonna end where the samurai dies but then is brought back to life by his 
his his wife or some woman or something. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember who she's supposed to be in the in his book. And basically, what that said to me is that Lerner was kind of down on his luck, but Rolla coming into his life kind of brought a new sense of 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 life to him. Ultimately, the the theme of this whole movie, I think, is just the concept of finding true connection with someone because Lerner has been very lonely for a while and I think he feels like Susan has really been his only friend but we kind of realize that she's that's that's because it's her programming um he you know he built her I think basically to be his friend and he was pro she was programmed to miss him while she is deactivated and I don't think he understands that that's not real love and friendship until he meets Rolla, who likes him. And um, I can't tell if it's, you know, like a romantic thing or she's just like, she just is really, she just really enjoys his company. Um, but either way, you know, he's, he realizes that that's what's, what true connection and friendship and love is. And I don't think he's really felt that before. And I don't really know if Rolla's felt that before. So it's free on Amazon if you want to give it a watch. I highly suggest you give it a watch because even if you don't love it, I think there is something to enjoy for everybody. I think the, the characters and their designs and their, their personalities and stuff I think are very unique. It doesn't feel conventional in really any way. I don't know. I think, it's, I think it uses that simplicity to its advantage because a lot of movies I think try to would try to do something like that and make it very very showy but this film doesn't feel like it tries too hard to be some sort of you know meta commentary on anything I think it's just really a story about connection and love and coming together to go on a journey it, and it's again one of those movies. If you if you watched my uh, video on the Vast of Night, one of my uh, pros, if you want to call it that, was that it feels very much like the director and the writers. They made the movie they wanted to make. There was something very unique that they had in their head, and because they weren't you know picked up by like Warner Brothers or something, some big studio. I don't know why I said Warner Brothers. Just picking a random studio anyway they were able to just kind of take that vision and do what they wanted to do with it uh i think i said everything i want to say about this movie go watch it it's a great movie i i think there is so much there's not a whole lot to like unpack from it it's not one of those where you get done and you're like what did i just watch but it's you get done with it and you're i don't know you're like wow what a good movie. Yeah, that's all I wanted to say about it. I hope you liked this video. Leave a like if you did. Uh, comment what, what you thought of the movie. Um, like I said, it's on Amazon Prime Video for free if you want to watch it. Uh, I think that's the only service that I know of. It could be on other ones, though. What do, did you think of the movie? Did you like it? Did you not? What did you think of this video? Did you like it? Did you not? What can we do to improve our channel? Um, what What do you want to see on the channel? You know, if there's things that you want to see us talk about, you know, go ahead and suggest it. Subscribe if you haven't already. Yeah, I think that's really all I have to say. I hope you all have a great day. I hope you are staying safe and uh, staying healthy. Um, hope you're doing what you can to make the world a better place for yourself and the people around you and just everybody in general. Hope you're watching some good movies, some good TV. Hope you're listening to some good music. You know, hope you're sitting on a, a comfy chair, unlike me, who is uh, sitting on the floor making this. Until next time. That was a really bad outro. I'm sorry.